Welcome to Tech Notice. Whether you're a creator or not, there comes a point where you have accumulated a lot of files, video files, photo files, documents, project files, graphics design, logos, lots of lots of files and they take a lot of space. Now, when you're working on your current project, whether it's, you know, photos, videos, graphics time, whatever, it isn't kind of rocket science how you're gonna, you know, store the project. You're just gonna have a project drive, whether it's an external SSD, hard drive, internal SSD. But the bigger question is, after you are done with the the project after the project is finished what are you going to do with this footage what are you going to do with all the files are you going to store them somewhere are you going to put them on an external hard drive how can you access them all at the same time without unplugging and plugging a pack of different external hard drives well let me introduce you to nas in this video we're going to be talking about what is a nas and why you might need it Now, first of all, by NAS, I don't mean him. I mean network attached storage. So if you're new to the whole NAS world and you've never maybe heard of NAS or maybe you just kind of heard of it, but you really wonder how it works, what can it do for you? Is it for me? Should I get it? And in this video, I'd like to introduce you to like the NAS world and what it can do. And if you are already a NAS user and maybe you've got a lot of tons of experience what NAS is, then why don't you comment below your experience, what you wish you knew before getting into the NAS world, or some of the things you wish you knew a bit before. I'll meet you in the comment section below. So then, what is a NAS and how does it work? So basically, a NAS system is this, what I have over here. This is an ASUS store NAS, and if you wanna pick one of those up, or if you're interested in this particular model, I'm gonna leave the link in the description. Basically what it is, is a tiny, tiny box, which actually contains a PC inside. So there is a motherboard, there's a processor, there is a storage system, there is RAM, and sometimes there is also a power supply in, but in our case, it is external power supply. So you literally plug it in, so power supply is external. And most importantly, there is hard drive bays or SSD bays. There is 3.5 inch bays over here, and you can also put 2.5 inch hard drives, SSDs inside there. Also inside this NAS, there is two M.2 slots if you wanna use M.2 SSDs as well for caching or storage. So basically how NAS works is it's like a mini storage device or like a completely another PC that the whole purpose for this NAS is to store files and make uh, a RAID system. So if you don't know what a RAID system is, a RAID system stands for redundant array of independent disks. So basically you've got a different hard drives in there. You're gonna put them in there and then this drive is gonna pull all those hard drives together into one pool. So you just see like a one big massive storage uh, place and you can configure them different way. Usually what you have is like you have one or two hard drives in the pool or inside here that act as kind of backup. So if any one of those drives fails, then you can pull that failed drive out and then exchange it to a new drive. And then you have constant backup of your drives basically. So all your files are there rather than having just a single drive in a PC. So if that fails, you know, files are gone. And here you're running like four in our case here four drives and one of them is a backup so basically i'm getting three hard drive amount of storage and one of them is a backup but any one of those four can fail and i'm still keeping all my data it's kind of system that has some kind of like a file backup system at the same time while giving you tons of other features so i want to keep talking about like what this nas is and how you use it and the easiest way to understand this is if you look at the ports what are over here so basically in the back here there is an hdmi port so if you want to you can connect this straight to like your your tv for example and you can stream some of the things over there or see this because there is like an actual operating system on it it's not windows it's not android it's not mac os but it's just like in it's on its own kind of a web interface type of thing so you can kind of see that over there two usb ports over here and there's a few ways how you can use these usb ports on this particular drive first of all you can buy extension for this 
NAS. So instead of buying the same one again, what you can buy is a bit cheaper, another four bay of NAS, and then you connect them through USB and then basically you can expand your storage and you can have two of these in here together. So you have like 12 drives all together. Then these two ports over here are ethernet ports and these are 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. Now, if you're new to this like NAS system world, then gigabit and gigabyte aren't the same thing. So when you see 2.5G, then what that means is it's 2,500 megabits port. And if you want to convert like the gigabits to megabytes, which is much more, you know, what you're used to seeing, like your hard drive is one terabyte or 1000 gigabytes or 1000 megabytes and you're transferring files you know 300 megabytes per second or something like that then how you can know how fast this connection is because that's the how you connect this NAS system to your computer is that if you have like one gigabit one gigabit equals 125 megabytes so you can literally just times whatever how many gigabit port you have whether it's one 2.5 5 or 10 gigabit or port if you times that by 125 you're gonna get the megabytes per second for example uh, 5g or 5 gigabit port is roughly around 625 megabytes per second and there is two ports in here so why do you have two if you want to connect two computers to this at the same time or you can have a switch and connect this NAS to the switch, which I'll probably make another video about. So stay tuned, subscribe if you want to see that. And from the switch, you're going to plug all the computers into the switch, which means that all your computers can talk to the NAS at the same time while having internet connection. And you can access the files, whether locally in the studio, if you have two computers or more, or externally where you're somewhere else, you just log in on the internet and you can access your files. Now also what you can do with these USB ports because there's one in the front over here as well. What you can do is you can plug in an external hard drive like one of these that you already have that has files on. You're going to plug it in here and you can then now over the internet access your files on the external hard drive as well. So let's say you have loads of old photos or something like this, this that you have on this external hard drive. You can easily just plug it in in the back or front of this ASUS to NAS. And then now when you want to post on, you need to post something on Instagram or however you need to show something to your clients. What you can do then is access this NAS on your phone. It's like a private cloud that is absolutely massive cloud service with all your files on and you can show, show them, download them or share them over the internet. And just to show you like how there is hard drives in there is if I press this button and pull this out, you can see, boom, there's a full size hard drive. Whoa. And when you're using hard drives inside the NAS system, then it's very important that you use NAS rated hard drives because the way they use together over here, there's like a vibration and different things and it uses a little bit differently than just a normal computer hard drive and they have like a better uh, durability and sometimes even faster speeds so it's very very important that you get nas rated hard drives i am using over here the seagate iron wolf nas or iron wolf pro nas there's these available as well and they're 12 terabytes in size each and that is another thing that is very important if you get into the nas system you need to have the hard drives the same size and preferably well if you can you can probably botch some different makes together as well but that is not recommended at all what you want to do is have them all the same size and the same makes to get the best performance and the best capacity because if some of the hard drives are smaller and some of them bigger you're actually going to lose the space of the bigger drives because it's going to make the raid compared to like the smallest hard drive in the bunch. So if I have 12, 12, 12 and 8 in there, then suddenly I'm not getting 12 from these and 8 from these. I'm actually getting 8 from all of the four hard drives. Just so you know, let me pop that back in there slowly. 
boom. So basically, in very simple terms, a NAS system is like your personal cloud storage that you can also directly attach with your computer if you wanted to and get access to the files in here. But did you know that NAS is so much more than the storage system and there's so many different ways how you can use it. The way I use the NAS system is that um, I have like multiple project uh, drives over there because I'm working on different projects at the same time. So some of them take more space, some of the less stage space. So there's about four, three or four project hard drives. Once the project is done on the SSD, what happens is the whole project folder with all the files that was included in the, fold, in the project are gonna be transferred into an archive folder inside this NAS. Uh, and that's based on the hard drives system or hard drive pool storage inside there. And I have configured this as RAID 5, so it means that I'm getting three out of four capacity of the drive. It's like the best bang for buck world between like performance, backup uh, and storage basically. And then now when I'm working on a new project or I'm working on something like this and I'm wondering, oh, I want some B-roll of something I shot for a different product or like a different part of the product. For example, if we're doing PC builds here and we're like, oh, do you remember we used that Noctua cooler over there, but I want to show some of the B-roll. So now I'm actually accessing the NAS straight from my computer and then I'm just pulling that B-roll file in straight to my project folder. I'm not copying the file actually across to the project folder, then actual, like I'm just dragging it into my project in Premiere Pro. So now my computer reads the actual B-roll file straight from the NAS, which is very, very, very useful. And the SSDs inside there, so the two M.2 SSDs that are inside, this I'm using as like a documents folder. So in there I have my LUTs and some of my presets and some of the things like that that I need to access maybe in some of the different uh, computers. So if I'm working on a laptop downstairs or something, I can access over the internet and pull my Lightroom presets, for example, that I've set out for myself. I'm pulling them like in there on a laptop and boom, I can use the same presets over there. The reason why it's good to use the M.2 drives for something like that is that they are very fast at random read and write speed. So if you have like a smaller files and they're scattered all over the SSD, then it's very quick to read that because you might be thinking, do I even need the M.2 SSDs in there? Because if you've done the math, then this port that you connect to your computer is only 2.5 G, which is just a little bit over 300 megabytes. But you know that those SSDs inside there are much faster than that. That means that this port over there is bottlenecking those SSDs inside there. And you're absolutely right. You're not going to get the full speed of the M.2 SSDs inside and you don't necessarily need them, but there is an option for that, which is very good. And if you're using it for a lot of documents and things, it's faster to read them from the SSD, like smaller files that are randomly spread across rather than sequential read from the hard drive, then the SSDs are faster inside there. So that's why you might need it. Now there's other ways how people might use the NAS. So feel free to comment what, how you use your NAS or how you would like to use your NAS in the comment section below. But you can also have like your security surveillance system in there as well. So let's say you're going to create another folder inside this RAID and you're going to store all your security footage as well into the NAS. And then another way how you can use this NAS is, and I bet this is going to come to you as a surprise, but basically this NAS has a built-in restreaming service. So if you've ever tried to stream your video to YouTube and Facebook at the same time, then you probably know that it's not possible. If you're using OBS, you can see that there's only like one platform you can stream it to, whether it's YouTube or somewhere. But if you want to stream it to like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, at the same time, you need some kind of restreaming service. And I used to pay like $150 a year to get our church restreaming service so we can stream on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. But now, if you have a NAS like this, what you can do is, from your OBS, what you can do is literally stream it to the NAS because it's connected to the internet. And this NAS is actually gonna restream it to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, 
name it, you can just restream it to all these different drives. And to have that included over there is insane. I'm very excited about that feature. So hopefully now you have a little bit of a better view of what a NAS is and how you use it and what it can do for you and why you might need it. Because if you have all your important files and folders and documents and if you're a videographer or running like a media production company or creating videos content for your clients then losing that client footage is is too much stress to even think about it but to have something like that where it backs itself up and you have a lot of big storage and you can access it online is absolutely amazing. Now this exact model of ASUS to NAS actually costs roughly around 500 pounds or 500 dollars depends where you're from and you're thinking whoa you're just paying this do you get the hard drives with it no the hard drives are going to come extra just the literal shell of the nas will come that just even the restreaming service if you think about that that costs 150 dollars a year so if you use this for the few years just the restreaming service is gonna equal out you know what you paid for this nas best bang for buck if you think you might not need the four bay one and you want something that is two bay one then you can go for the two bay one and um, pay about 100 pounds less now i don't necessarily recommend that because if you're in the point where you actually are buying the nas your business has grown to the point where you need a nas i recommend the four bay even if you don't fill it up with all the hard drives you can start with two hard drives and then later on when you need more storage add a few more storage and then, then change the raid level and then you have more because it's such a small price gap from two to four bays but i think it's a massively massively big like jump in terms of the specs and what you get in terms of the features from the nas so let me know in the comment section below if that was a little bit more clear to you how you might use the nas how it works what this can do for you and if you might need it now let me know in the comment section below if you watch this video think flipping egg i really need a nas now because i didn't know i needed but i need it now let me know if you are one of those people. Hopefully this video helped you to understand how it works and so on. If you like this video, hit that like button. It actually makes a difference. Thank you very much if you do so. Hit that subscribe button if you're interested in videos for content creators. More videos like these are coming out every single week. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.